Dolly friends, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Glitter Keithy, and I've been photographing Blythe since I was 16, but today's a little different. Never in my 10 years of collecting Blythe have I ever needed her more than I do now, and I'll explain what I mean by that in a moment. But first, let's just address the elephant in the room, shall we? The last video I published titled Blythe Hot Topics, Sweet Bubbly Bear Deboxing Full Segment, was published on March 2nd, 2020. Now, I want you to pay attention to the dates here because I realize this being a YouTube video, you could be watching this in 2020, or you could be watching this in 2025 or 2030, I don't know. Boy, could you imagine what amazing Blythe's I'd be reviewing 10 years from now, but that's besides the point. And so the date of that video holds a lot of significance for me because that was truly before the United States was put into survival mode regarding this virus. I can say with honesty that I don't see my life going back 100% to the way it was when that video was first posted. I don't see myself in that same exact place for a very long time. I think some of the effects of this virus will be with us for longer than we even realize. Now, obviously, we will reach a point where we will start leaving our homes again. We will hopefully be reopening our economy in the not-so-distant future. But really, are we ever going to view the world in the same way again? I mean, none of us have seen anything like this in our lifetimes. The last pandemic of this nature was really over a hundred years ago. So this is all very new to us. And that is why I think now more than ever, we really need our Blythe dolls. And I just spilled my tea. You know, it's funny because I come on this show, Blythe Hot Topics, to spill tea, figuratively speaking, but ironically, I always end up actually spilling my tea. I'm like cleaning up my mirror here because my tea literally just dropped everywhere. There's like tea droplets all over this little counter next to me. But anyways, now I know what you're thinking. Has Keith just officially lost it? Did he really just bring up the virus, and then tell me that now is the time I need my Blythe dolls more than ever? <sighs> oh, you betcha I did. Do I think Blythe should be our number one priority during this pandemic? Oh, come on, you gotta be kidding me. Of course not. The health of ourselves and our friends and our family We'll always take number one priority, but for the most part, I think that goes without saying. People will always come before dolls. So why am I talking about Blythe dolls today? Well, besides that being the topic of the Glitter Keithy YouTube channel, I gotta tell you folks, the joy I get from the doll hobby has really been one of the few things keeping me going during these past few weeks. As you may already know, I had to cancel Blythe for Easter in the wake of the virus. And at the time that I made that announcement, the United States had officially become the new epicenter of the virus. It was really one of the most difficult decisions I've recently made because it meant that I was finally facing reality. I no longer had the time to create these baskets. I no longer had the energy the inspiration, or depending on the country, even the means to ship these baskets? Did you know? Did you know that there are customizers who can't even finish the projects that they're working on while stuck at home because of new shipping restrictions surrounding this virus? So you already can't go anywhere to shop for your supplies. Now they can't even ship them to you. So now what? We're all staying at home. There's really nothing to do outside, considering in some places even public parks are considered off limits. And so we're inside with our families and yes, with our dolls. 
I always say at the end of my videos, thank you for spending your doll time with me today, and I really mean that. It is so important for us in the Blythe community to have our doll time. And what exactly do I mean by that? Well, after I canceled my event, I was really sad. I was so sad, it's not even funny. I had absolutely zero inspiration to try and finish the projects that I had already started working on before the peak of the virus. So what did I do? Well, as I stated already, my last video was about deboxing Sweet Bubbly Bear. So there she was in the display case, her hair half disheveled, if we're being honest. And I thought to myself, you know what? I'm going to redo her hair. I thought, I know, I'm going to give her a hair spa. Now, if you know anything about my past with Blythe, you know that I don't have the most solid history when it comes to customizations of really any kind. Let's just say that some of my first dolls are no longer with us today for one reason or another. Listen, I'll be the first to admit, I'm not a customizer by any stretch of the imagination. I'm a really great photographer. Really great at writing poems. Not so great at customizing. So, I'm not gonna lie, I always get a little scared when it comes to taking apart a Blythe doll or doing an experiment with her hair. But you know what? I was so sad that I didn't really care anymore. I needed something to distract me. And so, I took her a Radiance Renew Blythe, which I've never owned before, and I somehow managed to disassemble her and perform my experimental hair spa treatment. I'm just gonna let this image speak for itself because I'm not even gonna try to explain what's going on to you. I'm gonna mention at the end of this video where you can find a tutorial of what in the world I was doing here. And if you're wondering, yes, I also made her a slight custom by boggling her eyelids and also giving her a slight gaze correction. And I gotta say, I was really proud of myself. I haven't done any sort of customization work, such as messing with the eye mechanism in, I don't know, seven years, eight years. It's been a long time. And as I was customizing her iMac, and as I was learning from my new experiment with her hair, which turned out amazing, by the way, I was able to forget for a moment. I was able to forget about the sadness. I was able to forget about the devastation that this virus is causing in families across the world and especially in New York. You know, I go to New York every year in the fall, and I gotta tell you, my heart just breaks. It breaks so bad for everyone in New York City. Words can't even explain it. So the purpose of me bringing this up is if you're sad, and really there's a lot to be sad about right now, it's okay to take out your dolls. It's okay to do something different try something new, do a hair spa, maybe even try customizing. There is so much freedom in just getting lost in a project, especially one that inspires you. But I just want to make something very clear. Coping with Blythe doesn't mean going out and buying a Blythe. Allow me to reiterate, coping with Blythe does not mean going out and buying another doll. Coping with Blythe does not mean waiting on your stimulus check so that you can blow it on your grail girl. Coping with Blythe means looking at what you do have already in your collection and asking yourself, how can I feel inspired today? You know, I'm in the process of writing my new book, The Blythe Ban, A Rainbow Story. And one of the things that I talk about is what brought us to start collecting Blythe dolls in the first place. Of course, the friendships are great. The friendships are so great, and the relationships we build with one another are truly life-changing in some cases. 
I can't even begin to tell you how some of my friends in this community have brought me through some of my darkest days. I think that friendship is probably the best gift that the Blythe hobby could possibly give us. But if we want to talk about what made us fall in love with Blythe to begin with, I truthfully think that somehow, somewhere, it all started when we saw a Blythe doll and we felt inspired. In some crazy way, we were all inspired by a doll with a huge head and giant eyes. I mean, thank goodness we're all fine, outstanding citizens, otherwise this could look really weird. So really, when the entire world is feeling uninspired, I want you to find the courage to be inspired. Which leads me to this video's question of the day. What about Blythe dolls makes you feel inspired? Because the truth is, we can all look to our doll hobby for inspiration, or any hobby for that matter. Although this is the best hobby, but you already knew that, didn't you? <laughs> There are some people who comment on my videos who haven't even started collecting Blythe dolls yet. I have no idea who they are. They have no idea who I am. It's amazing. And that's why I do this channel. Because really, it's amazing to both inspire and be inspired. So if you're watching this video and you have no idea who I am and you think you might like Blythe dolls but you're not sure and you've never bought one before, you know, this is not an exclusive club. There is no waiting list. There is no registration. So if you feel inspired to, go ahead and purchase your first Blythe doll. Do something creative with her. Sew something for her. Style her hair. Do whatever you want. The possibilities in this community and in this hobby are endless. And now, I just want to take a moment to show you my sweet bubbly bear after her spa transformation. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage my sweet bubbly bear, <gasps> 2 .0. So I'm going to try to make this brief because it's actually quite late at night at the time that I am filming this. And sweet bubbly has a curfew, but there she is ladies and gentlemen. And this is really the result of what I call the boba straw spa. Do you like it? I thought it was kind of catchy and kind of creative. I don't know. What do you think? The boba straw spa. And as you can see, I sort of gave her a loose styling with her hair. I just created like a faux bang because I don't really like straight across bangs. So I pushed some hair forward and swept it to the side. And the result of the Boba Straw Spa were very loose um, beach waves, which is kind of what I was going for. I wasn't expecting this to look so beachy, but I don't mind it at all. It was kind of like a pleasant surprise. So I would definitely recommend this type of spa treatment on a doll that you would probably find exploring or doing something outdoors. I would even nickname this hair spa like the Saltwater Blythe Hair Spa. I'm gonna move aside for a moment because I realize I'm hogging the camera real estate when really you wanna be looking at her, not me. So I'm gonna move. Um, oh. I'm going to move and I'm not going to push my iPad over in the process of doing that, but I'm going to move and push her forward so that you can get a better look at her and her hair. Also, you might want to take a look at her eye mechanism. It is slightly altered. As I mentioned before, I gave her a slight gaze correction and boggle. Actually, I don't know if slight is the right word. I kind of almost overdid it, if you ask me, but I was still able to salvage it and it looks Amazing. So now we have a better look at my slightly customized Sweet Bubbly Bear. If you look at her eye mech, she has a gaze correction and also a boggle. And of course, 
you can see more up close her beach waves from the Boba Straw Spa. I will never get tired of saying that. Miss Bubbly wears a exquisite dress from the incomparable Cindy Sowers. She has an Etsy shop and her work is incredible. I can't even find words to describe the pieces of art that she's able to sew. It's mind-blowing and is even more beautiful in person if that's even possible. So that is Bubbly's new look. I'm so thrilled with her new attitude and her beach waves and really everything. She's about to go to the beach. Hopefully she'll change before she goes to the beach because, you know, the dress is amazing, but hopefully I can put on a swimsuit and then I won't get this wonderful dress dirty. Anyways, I have to go to bed. Bye, everyone. Woo! Beach waves. Bubba stress ball. Bubba stress ball. Bubba stress ball. Ooh. Bye. You know, after a while, it kind of makes you jealous. It's like, I wish I had beach waves. If only life was so easy. All right, so at the risk of this video getting way too long, there was a new Blythe released for pre-order on April 18th, and her name escapes me, I'm not gonna lie. Is it Audette? Let me double check my notes. Mia Blythe Audette Lake of Tears is coming to homes across the nation and worldwide on May 15th. Oh my god, I just got done trying to boost everyone's spirits, and here I am talking about a doll named Lake of Tears. Okay, but really, she has a lot to be happy about. You might want to take a look and listen to her details. So Audette, and boy, I really hope I'm pronouncing that right. I'm sorry if I'm not. Audette is basically the Neil Blythe version of the classic story surrounding the very famous ballet Swan Lake. Of course, if you're like me, the only Swan Lake you think of is the movie Black Swan. Yeah, I've never actually seen the real ballet, not gonna lie. Guilty as charged. I'll start off by saying that once again, her hair was the selling point for me. It's described as light brown, but I'd even go as far as to say it's a very sophisticated beige slash blonde. What do you think? Okay, I honestly don't really know how to describe it, but it's a very calming color, and I honestly can't wait to see it in person. And now we have made it to the poetry segment of Blythe Hot Topics Coping with Blythe. What, you thought we were going to be coping without poetry? Oh, give me a break. Let's take a moment to read her poem, shall we? Snaps, everyone. <clears throat> Finally, I have found true love. I will no longer shed tears at the lake at night. Ugh, so glad to hear it, sister. I was able to meet him because the moonlight returned to me. Okay, I trust you. I am happy to find love that will last forever. <laughs> Wouldn't we all be? Aww. See, this is exactly the type of Blythe doll that we need during a pandemic, and boy, did that get dusty. Why did I do that? You know, we need a doll that believes in true, everlasting love. Don't you think so? Don't you think a doll dedicated to the concept of love is exactly what we need during a crisis such as this? I don't know about you, but I think I will be very happy to have Miss Audette around. I am already claiming that she will be my stress ball, so to speak, in the coming months. I'm going to be honest, I don't really have much purpose for her stock outfit, but for the sake of the remainder of the video, <gasps> shall we? So the ballet costume, she comes with multiple costumes, by the way, and they're described as costumes, not outfits. The ballet costume is one of lots of white tulle with a silver lace trimming and also rhinestone accents all throughout. You know, looking at this image, oh, 
you know, looking at this image, it almost makes it look like she has arms that like go in like a ballerina. And when I first saw this image, I got my hopes up. I'm not going to lie. I thought, oh my God, are they changing her arms? Are we going to be able to bend her arms? What's going on, people? But as fate would have it, here she is with her traditional Takara arms. Okay, maybe I just let my imagination run wild with that one. But anyways, go ahead and tell me in the comments. Do you think they should introduce a new arm design for Neo Blythe dolls? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe she could be called Radiance Renew Arms. It could happen. The blue ball gown she comes with portrays the printed scene of a swan literally on a lake. So the description goes on to say that the swan pictured on her dress is actually her at night. Woo! Plot twist! All that is transformed into a swan by nightfall. And then she goes to the lake where she presumably waits for her true love. <laughs> the color scheme of this piece is blue and white, which of course complements her blue eyeshadow and white ballet shoes and tights. Now, the head ornament is really fascinating, and we're going to get to that now. This is not something we typically see with a Blythe doll. Let me just say that everything with Audette is very costumey, so do keep that in mind if you intend on purchasing this doll. Her head ornament is obviously no exception to the costumey rule here. It seems to serve both as a crown and a headband, so it's sort of like a two-in-one. Right off the bat, I am a little bit concerned that the feathers that serve as the headband portion do appear to be made out of a hard plastic material. I'm gonna be redundant here, but I'm gonna say the same thing I said with regards to Sweet Bubbly Bear's shades. You have to be very careful if you do plan on putting this on your dolls. It absolutely will scratch her face if you are not careful putting it on, but if you're anything like me, you steal it from the doll before she even gets a chance to wear it. I don't know. Should I try on Audette's head ornament in the deboxing video? I don't know. I just might. We don't know with me these days. The feathers are topped with a silver crown and, you know, the crown... What do you guys think? It left me with a little bit to be desired. But her look is completed with a small pendant that drops down to her forehead and is finished with a beautiful makeshift Swarovski crystal. A girl can dream. No, but seriously, it does look like it is forming a teardrop. So I love that detail because it plays so well in the narrative of Odette. If there's one thing I really like about a Blythe release, it's a storyline and cohesive theming. So a plus with some of the smaller details with this doll, I must say. Although, really, what do I know? But anyways, you have to admit, the little teardrop does add a touch of interest and dimension to the piece. It really draws your eye in when she's wearing it. So, I don't know, I might have to put her head ornament on when I take her out of the box. But, oh my god, I'm gonna need more chamomile tea before I do that. You don't want to scratch the faceplate of your dolls, ladies and gentlemen. What can I tell you? You just don't want to do it. I think the feature I'm most excited about is that you can actually tie up her cute white ballet shoes. I don't know why I'm so excited about that. It just seems kind of cool. Once again, we have a girl in Radiance Renew, which for the record disassembles way differently than any other Blythe mold that I've taken apart before. So keep that in mind if you're like me and you pretty much only deal with RBLs ever. Radiance Renew, it's not the same as RBL. I really had no idea. So newsflash to anyone who's watching who might not know that. One of the main differences, the scalp and dome. I'll allow you to find that out either on yourself or you can find it out when I get the time to make a video regarding my hair spa process. So we have another Radiance Renew Blythe for 2020, 
but this time her face color is snow. We're also seeing another loose perb and center part with this doll, although she does not have bangs like Sweet Bubbly. And what can I say? That is a nice little breath of fresh air for anyone who doesn't fancy fringe on their girls. But then again, that's besides the point. Okay, but seriously, every time there's a Blythe release that there are no bangs on, I'm always like, hallelujah. I don't know why. I just like, I don't like bangs. And I know I'm the minority. No need to remind me, people. So in the factory image, we see that her hair, as I mentioned before, is this lighter brown color. It's really almost like a creamy tone of beige. It's truly magnificent. And I know beige isn't the most exciting word in the world, but it's a beautiful color. If you can think of a better way to describe this color, let me know in the comments because I probably am not using the best description, but it's, it's like, I don't know. It's like honeysuckle. I don't know, people. It's really pretty, really pretty. And I bet it's even more beautiful in person. And ooh, I just got chills thinking about her coming in May. I cannot wait. Cannot wait. Her blue eyeshadow is complemented by her pink cheeks and pink lips. We should really get a Blythe with like green blush or something. Wouldn't that be fun? Am I the only person who would like that? I don't know. I think that would be kind of interesting if you ask me. And she has a special light blue color of forward-facing eye chips. This will replace the typical orange eye chips that you find in more traditional Blythe releases. Is anyone getting flashbacks to Ice Room? Oh, I know I am. So, my final thoughts about this doll? Well, all I can say is, Blythe, you've done it again. While I'm not crazy about her stock outfits, although it's kind of nice that I can say stock outfits, plural, meaning she comes with two. That's kind of a nice bonus if you ask me. But while I'm not crazy about them, I do love the concept they are portraying with this doll. And I also love that they are getting very creative with the storytelling of this doll. I mean, if you look at her box, it literally looks like she's on stage with her romantically draped theater curtains forming the perfect frame. You can tell a lot of thought went into her concept and design. That being said, this is obviously not something your Blythe is going to wear going to the supermarket or the park. So just keep that in mind. If you buy this doll and you plan on taking her on adventures, she will be a ballerina wherever she goes. So if that's what you're going for, perfect. If it's not what you're going for, Pack a few extra outfits. When I look at this image, for example, I really find it aesthetically pleasing. I love the color palette of her stock outfit. I love how natural her hair looks when it is down. Yes, I'm not crazy about the crown, but I do love that there is a little gem that guides your eyes to her eyes. And it's overall a great doll. But I left Sweet Bubbly Bear's stock outfit on her for really over a month. With Audette Lake of Tears, once I debox her, I think I'm going to redress her. So we should have some fun with that in my deboxing video. Maybe I should start taking out some outfits and we can decide which one looks best on her. So all in all, I can't wait to be receiving Miss Audette in the mail next month. Neo Blythe Audette Lake of Tears is expected to be released on Junie Moon, May 15th, 2020. And I hope that if you missed out on her pre-order, you really take me seriously this time and actually mark your calendars. I hope you actually set an alarm because it breaks my heart to see some of these comments from people who are missing out. You know, they didn't place their order on time, they didn't set a reminder, they didn't watch the Glitter Keithy YouTube channel where I told everyone to set an alarm, a literal alarm, like as if you're waking up to go to work. And if you're wondering why my eyes just traveled above the lens of the camera, it's because there is a flying insect invading my space right now. 
Will it enter the frame of the video? We don't know. See, ladies and gentlemen, even the fly is listening to my advice and is not going to miss out on another Neo Blythe. So why are you going to miss out on another Blythe? Did you know? Did you know that Japan is 16 hours ahead of California time, which happens to be the time zone in which I am recording this video? Did you know that Junie Moon typically posts pre-orders at around 4 or 5 in the morning Japan time? So, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't even tell you her release date is May 15th. Maybe I should tell you her release date is May 14th. And then maybe you can calculate from your time zone what time you will be when it is 4, 5, or 6 a.m. in Japan. Do you think that will help you out? I don't know. You can try it. I think you'll like it. So long story short, please check your time zones and if you need to, adjust her release date accordingly. See what happens when you watch all the way to the end of Glitter Keithy's Blythe Hot Topics? See, I might just help you get your next Blythe. So if you want this doll, can you just do all of those things for me? The trend for a Neo Blythe released in 2020 thus far has been for it to sell out within eight hours. Now, I don't know about you, but that's not really a long amount of time. I mean, if you clock in to work and the doll is released, she could be sold out by the time you clock out, just to give you a little perspective. So these dolls, they go fast. Also, if you're confused about the pricing of a Blythe, I want you to go to xe.com. That's X as in x-ray, E as in easy. And when you get there, you will see a currency converter that can convert any currency to US dollars using the daily exchange rate. Because what costs $180 in Japanese currency today may not cost $180 US dollars in Japanese currency tomorrow. So you might just want to keep that in mind. I mean, especially in these uncertain times, that might be something you want to double check. So can you also just do that for me as well? All right, everybody, I think I've covered enough in this Blythe Hot Topics segment. I mean, really, I could go on forever, but I don't know if everyone would like that, so I guess I might as well just find a stopping point. But before I do, please just remember what I meant by coping with Blythe. This is not about how many dolls you have or how many dolls you plan on buying. This is also not the time to be judging each other or comparing each other. This is the time for us all to come together and feel inspired. And yes, this is the time to cherish our friendships in the doll world. Check in on someone you haven't heard from in a while. Tell someone how much you appreciate them, but don't get caught up in the drama. And if there is drama, don't let it distract you from being the creative doll collector you were inspired to be. Because if we're not inspired, what are we doing here really? I love you so much for watching. If you're new to my channel, hit subscribe to see more exciting Blythe content just like this. Boy, I feel like we just had a miniature Blythe therapy session there. Here's to hoping the next video will be under better circumstances. But in the meantime, don't forget to answer this video's <gasps> question of the day. What about Blythe makes you feel inspired? Gee, it sounds like inspired is just the word of the day around here, doesn't it? Thank you for spending your doll time with me today, and I cannot wait to be back to Deepbox Neo Blythe Audette, Lake of Tears, with all of you. And if you'd like to know how I did my sweet bubbly bear beach waves hair spa, you can find a brief tutorial on glitterkeithy.com. I am still developing my own technique, but who knows? I might just post an entire video about hair spas if enough people ask for it, so you might just want to stay tuned. And would you look at that? I still have tea. Until next time. This has been a Glitter Keithy moment. Please be safe. Ciao.